from selling dope to selling hope. I know that's a, a weird title. Preachers who used to be dope dealers went from selling dope to selling hope. Now, keep in mind, what I'm saying in this video, I'm not talking about all pastors. Um, from growing up in the hood, it was always an old saying that don't nobody ride Cadillacs but pimps and preachers. But Cadillac was a thing coming up. Now, it's the Rolls Royces, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, brother, uh, brother Rodney, not Rodney Jackson, but Rodney O'Connor, you asked me a great question. Is it wrong for a pastor to have a lavish lifestyle, flamboyant lifestyle? Because everybody been talking about um, the, 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 the pastor over there, um, that, that, that incident that happened in New York, um, where they just came in there and robbed him at gunpoint. And I tell you, looking at that video, something don't add up to me. Y'all know me, I'm always discerning. And he, uh, he, he told the uh, media how he did um, five years in the penitentiary before uh, for grand loss and, and um, identity theft. Now, if you watch the video I done about how the Most High showed us about gold, having gold, gold is beautiful. And even when you look at the, the temple that Solomon built, Israel was always showed about gold. Now, ain't nothing wrong with having nice things. But the nice things shouldn't have you. Now, when you listen to this man talk, he said, and I want to make sure I said this just like he said it. He said it ain't he said it ain't about the having the nice things. But it's about what he wants for himself. It ain't about being, you know, flamboyant and having that lifestyle. Well, if it ain't about that, to me, my thing is, if it's not about that, why are you so crazy about it? Hmm. Teach all the spirit. Why you got to be flashy? Now, once again, I'm not hating. You do what you do. But my thing is, I, I, it, it just, it always makes me kind of laugh when people say, well, it ain't, about, it ain't even about this and that. And then, well, well, how much is enough is enough? When is enough enough? Because it's amazing that you read in this same Bible that says, what does it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? Knowing that when you walk around flashy, your chances of getting jacked is more and more. When you come and out in broad daylight, especially being flashy, showing everybody all your jewelry. This, this is why I had a problem with that pre at preachers of LA stuff when they came on TV. What's amazing is that Yahshua <laughs> never walked around with this type of prosperity gospel that you see going on. What he wore, how he dressed. And his prosperity was totally different than what you see going on now. Because he was talking about your soul prospering. He was concerned about your heart. Now, I don't know if that thing was staged. Like I said, I don't know it all. Don't never claim to know it all. But just looking at the video, and then I think about an insurance claim. But just looking at the video... I don't know, something just didn't sit right in my spirit. And then he said his little, his little baby was here at gunpoint. A million worth of jewelry. What is going on? <laughs> See, when I was coming up, I hate to say it like this, like Brother Daniel always say. I hate to say this, Brother Daniel, but the majority of the pastors that I knew, that's why I'm using this title. Let me get back to this title. From selling dope to selling hope. And some of them used to be strung out. And now they are pastors. And I'm not, I'm not saying that all of them that were strung out 
are like the ones that I know who continue to use the gospel to get rich. See, if you really think about it, a dope dealer, I'm talking about a small dope dealer, they are not dumb. They very good with calculating. They know their math. They know their product. They know how to sell. So when a dope dealer with that mentality gets into a pastor's position, he still got that mentality. And I'm not saying all dope dealers who used to be dope dealers who are, are pastors now operate this way because some of them that I know, they are no longer that way. And when they left the streets, they left the streets and the streets. And they don't they don't be in the pulpit begging. And some of them work, they got they got two jobs, and they don't ask the church for nothing. And they go out on the streets, they reach out to the streets, they 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 offer the food pantries and everything. Shout out to them. But then everybody ain't like them. Mm. You got the ones that used to sell dope, and that ain't mentality is to sell hope. See, even if you wasn't a pastor, being flashy and you riding around and, and you know you finna be out in the open, you are taking a, a great chance once again on being robbed. I remember so many teenagers coming up back in the day um, being robbed, being jacked. I ain't, I ain't even talking about the church now. I'm just just stating the facts, wearing the flashy jewelry, being flashy, you stick out. That's why real dope dealers wouldn't be flashy. They didn't want you to know what they had. And then you got them that just, they're going to be flashy. So you, you look at these preachers that do this now, and it's the flamboyant lifestyle of these preachers that's, that's doing this with all these blessing plans. Like I always say, they give you so many blessing plans, you give them the blessing while you stuck with the plan. Now, me personally, this is my opinion when I say this. Ain't no way to me, my opinion, that a pastor should walk around flashing and throwing in other people's face. Because you think because you weren't a title pastor, you won't get robbed? And I'm just tying all this in together to answer your, your, your email, brother. Well, yeah, when you look at gold and, and the, the type of building, the, the temple that Solomon built, flawless, beautiful. Beautiful. But do you think the most times more concerned about a building and your flashy material things or your soul when you can't take none of this with you? Like I was saying, there's nothing wrong with having nice things. But the problem that come to play is when them nice things start having you. You can't serve two masters. Israel fell for idolatry, hard, idol worship. But the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. The love of it is the root of all evil. And you got pastors out here. I ain't even talking about you. You ain't even got to have a mega church. I know pastors out here, man. They they got these nice cars, nice cribs, and the church look like a trap house. They wouldn't dare do their own home in the way they doing what they so called the house of God. Oh, I'm so glad that the Most High shows us in His Word a building not made by man's hands. And people are going to continue to do what people do. The lavish, the luxury. This is why I keep telling people, and, and this is no disrespect to our no pastor. Truth hurt. But this is why I keep telling people, watch their actions. Watch what they say, but better yet, watch what they do. See, I'm, I'm going to tie this in this video. I got, I got to get ready to go in a few when you look at what Creflo Dollar have done and said, what Joyce and Myers have done and said, who else? Uh, Kenneth Copeland, Leroy Thompson, Benny Hinn. The list just goes on and on. I'm just naming a few. Let me stop right there just after that few. Creflo even came back 
and told them in that video, I am not going to apologize because that was an example. I'm not going to apologize for that. Is that true repentance? No. I told y'all that in the first video I did. Joss Ann Maya said she's not going to apologize. Benny Hinn, when he did apologize, my point is, look at how much money you done took up. And in those years and years of time, best believe a lot of people have died and you can't give them nothing back if you wanted to. Our Savior never used the gospel to preach for money. What can you gain? I told y'all a long time ago when Creflo Dollar was running on stage with Leroy Thompson with that money comment. He, that's the spirit. And if you catch his videos, there is one video um, Creflo was doing when he was talking about, he used the same thing, money comment. He was screaming it out. In this particular other video, he was talking about how he needed a $65 million plane. Are y'all serious? So now you need a $65 million plane to fly over a whole lot of people you could have helped. Somebody catch that on the way home. This is just open rebuke. I love you enough to tell you the truth. Yeah, I remember one dude, yeah, the, the old plane we got is just not good enough. And then, and, and then. I mean, I wonder how many people can fly on that plane if they wanted to. He said, I'm crazy enough to believe that God can give me a $65 million plane. I guess some people are going to try to fly their way into heaven. $65 million for our plane. So some of these people that's from the hood off the streets are going to continue to use the Bible. And I'm not saying Creflo is from the streets and an old boy in New York is from the streets because I, I know he, I don't know where he's from. And um, I'm just saying you got, you got people that also go to seminary school. <laughs> go, it goes back to the live chat I just did about how they use philosophy and traditions of men to brainwash people. That's why I did the old video. Y'all don't need a gun to rob Christians, these type of Christians. You don't need a gun. All you need is a Bible. That's it. And you can get so many to believe and fall for your seducing doctrines of devils, them seducing spirits. Those are spirits. When you see all them, them TV vans and people, see, it, it, they being exposed now. But here's the thing, are they truly repenting or are they just trying to say something to get the criticism up off of them? I don't want nobody talking about it now. See, what would have done it for me with Creflo if he would have broke down crying hard and proof would have been shown that he been, he done started giving millions to her, millions to these people, this person over here who's struggling, this person who need a house, all that money you done took up now, how much of it can you give back? Are you willing to give back? Or are you just going to continue to to use your so-called fake ass apology? I said it. Like Pastor Dobby would say, I said it. <laughs> That's your apology. Your apology in your way. But you you already told everybody, I'm not going to apologize. And people emailing me with JT, he did apologize, did he? He did repent. To who? He must have did like Judas and repented to himself. Y'all don't want me to talk on this subject. And then, like I said, you got the ones from selling dope to selling hope. Even Joss Ann, she said, I'm not going to apologize. For what? You done took up sick people money. And back in the day, a lot of our older people was easy to brainwash. I hate to say it like that. Not all of them. But oh, I got to give my money. Because a lot of them couldn't even read. And I'm not talking bad about them. I'm just stating facts and not all of them. But how many of the people back in the day was giving their money? Sister Alicia, I got your email too, man. My emails are stacked sky high. 
You said as a as a as a member, I I, I used to go to that church. I used to support Creflo. Creflo had me broke. I'm, I'm glad you woke up. Wake some more people up. I'm glad you woke up. You say when it came down to your house, your bills, he was so convincing because he would he was speaking the way. Oh, that's that seducing spirit. That's them doctrines of demons that you would feel guilty even when you knew it was your last. Boy, let them try to play that mess on JT. When it come down to my house and your your bed, who you who you which one you think I'm gonna go for and take care of? Mine. See, the Holy Spirit is is still showing us through the word. The word don't change, even though people try to change it. The Holy Spirit is showing us. Wolves in sheep clothing. Watch the actions. Test the spirits by the spirit to see if they are of the Holy Spirit. See if they're of Yah. What you gonna test them with if you don't have a tester? How do you get away? Not only do the preacher get away with it all these years, how do the, the, the congregation sit up and allow it? And you sitting up here reading them same scriptures. Oh, we got a rebuke. The Bible say correct. Well, where was that at with Creflo? Where was that at with Josh saying? Where was that at with all these, these people that have been getting away with it? It's, it's a very, it's a very seducing spirit. See, a lot of times when we hear seduced, we just want to tie it in with a woman seducing a man with sex. It's, one, it's more than one way to be seduced. It's more than one way to prostitute yourself. I ain't talking about a whole on no corner. These prophets, P-R-O-F-I-T-S, have been using the title prophet, P-R-O-P-H-E-T, to be more of a P-R-O-F-I-T, which leaving people B-R-O-K-E broke. Break it down, Holy Spirit. But you sit up there talking about just sow a seed. And, and I'm telling you, brother, this is your year. You sit up pretending people, it's their time, it's harvest time, and you don't even know what the hell season them people is in in their year. I mean, in their in they, in they life. Get ready to pluck up what you plant, brother. It's your time, brother. You ain't planted up nothing, so you ain't finna pluck, you ain't finna pluck up nothing. Y'all shut the hell up with all that lying. Sit down or get set down by the Holy Spirit. Don't you know all that stuff from years and years? You have grieved the Holy Spirit. Your apology is fake. as a $2 bill. You ain't repented. You repented to yourself. So I said all this to add in with this video. When you talking about living a, a, a flamboyant lifestyle, what's the point of it? When is enough enough? Now, you better be lucky ain't nobody shot you down with all your gold on. See, there was a time, there was a time back in them days, man, you would get shot down for your, for your jewelry. That's why I say, even if I wasn't talking about church, you know how many youngsters have lost their life because they got jacked behind their rims? Y'all remember when the Triple Gold Dayton's came out? Y'all remember that? Them, them... The triple gold Dayton's, the, the gold, the flashy, the, the hair and bone, the links, the three finger rings, the nuggets, the, 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 the gold nugget bracelets. Man, one point of time, man, folks was real flashy back in the days and they was getting killed behind it. It ain't worth it. And like I tell people all the time, yeah, you work hard. I'm not knocking what people do and what they buy. You do what you do, but you got to realize it's somebody out here that's ready to take your life behind what you got. Man, I remember when 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 uh black people back back I don't know what year that was. What year was that when they came out with them Raiders caps? The caps was black and gold. 
and a lot, lot of gang members was wearing them, and people was getting robbed for the caps and the jacket. Gunpoint, shot up, killed, behind a cap and a jacket. Or behind shoes, behind a vehicle. It's sad what we living in. So especially when you got a family, you got to ask yourself, am I putting my family in jeopardy? The flamboyant lifestyle of these pastors is showing you who they are and what they truly represent. Because look at the message. Now as I close, compare your pastors. Now I'm talking about all pastors now. I'm talking about the good and the bad. I want whatever church you go to, I want you, I want you to, to compare your pastor to the way Yahshua is, was. Does his teachings line up with Yahshua's teachings? Is he preaching an unbalanced message? Is he in the pool pit begging and begging and begging and begging? I remember being here and said, I will no longer beg no more. I, I will no longer another day teach the prosperity gospel. Hell, you done taught it so long. How many lifetimes, how many, how many lives, if you were here to be left around a long time, how, how many times could you live off all that money? You done, you done took up millions, billions. You talking about people that's been taking up money 30, 40 years. Or more. That's a long time. So yeah, this is my little two cents. And with that being said, y'all have a wonderful, wonderful, blessed day. From selling dope to selling hope. And even if they wasn't from the streets, from seminary to almost on your way to the penitentiary. Or as my uncle would say, the penitentiary. That man, that man, like I said, that man was locked up. There are a lot of preachers that get out of jail, start a ministry. Get out of prison, start a ministry, and do good with it. But then there are some that get out of penitentiary. They still got that street life mentality, that dope game mentality. So they take the dope game mentality to the church. Because they know how to sell. They know the product. And you know what the product is now? The word. Sad what we living in, y'all. Have a blessed day. Shalom.